Hi everybody, Armored Pants here and I have another tank review for you. This time we're going to look at the French 90 AMX M4 Mille 54 which is the Snow Globe Christmas event tank. So we're going to have a look at that um, in some detail, the tech spec, we're going to review the tank, have a look at some gameplay. But before that, let's have a look at, oh Jesus, not this shit again. Let's have a look at this fucking Snow Globe bullshit, right? Now, if you have been recently lobotomized or kicked in the fucking head by a large toothed animal, you may want to eagerly participate in this snow globe event. Um, but if you still are in um, possession of all of your mental faculties, then you probably won't. And here's why, right? There's a 1% drop, drop chance of getting this tank in the snow globes, right? You're gonna watch me here in this two minute video burn through 18,000 gold, which is over 50 euros of gold, right? Almost 60 bucks of gold um, to get one snow globe. And they say that you can get, if you get 10 snow globes, you're guaranteed um, to get the tank. So let's say on average, you get a snow globe every five boxes. I'm assuming, you know, you just open the boxes for gold. Of course, there's other way to get a snow globe. You can get one for completing this, um, these activities, this event. But let's say then it's on average you get five boxes and I don't hear by the way so this is being optimistic let's say on average you get five and um, you get for five boxes you get one snow globe so that's 50 boxes so basically that is 75,000 in gold which is basically 200, 200 euros over 200 bucks so that's sort of if you want to guarantee it and now of course it can be cheaper than that but that's sort of the kind of money that we're looking at. Now I know I've seen people on forums saying, hey, I got one snow globe and I got it. Okay, fucking congratulations, well done. But that's not what most people are gonna get. Most of us are gonna get fucked. You just saw me here on one of my accounts <clears throat> burning through 18,000 of gold for one snow globe in which I got a tank, which I already have. Okay, now I know it's gonna give me back some gold and maybe get another box and then that box will get buck all as well, but you know, Boosters and look for 250,000 credits and all that like basically that's three games three wins in a decent Premium tank, you know, I mean this is fuck all used to you, right? And this is real money We're burning through here coming up to Christmas after a year in which most of us have had the shittiest fucking experiences of a lifetime um, And some of us have even been unlucky to lose our jobs or lose family members, etc, right? Anyway, in terms of the tank itself, I mean, this is a decent tank, you know, and if you're setting it up, you want you want to run pate, improved fuel, coffee, qua and croissant to max out the performance like view range and um, the reload time. Um, in terms of the gun system, I would run gun rammer, supercharger, refined gun. That maxes out the gun system. You can, of course, uh, run calibrated shells if you want to, and we'll discuss maybe my, my, why you might want to do that in a second. Um, the gun is a 130 millimeter gun. Um, and you get 480 damage points with your AP round, 400 with uh, Pramo and 620 with um, HE. But it does have relatively low DPM, right? You can see here, if you look at it, its figures, its DPM figures are pretty low for tier 10. Um, you get 260 millimeters of pen with AP. The Pramo is a kind of um, uh, reinforced headed AP. You get 310 with that. HE gives you 65 millimeters, and that goes up to 273, 326, and 72 millimeters, 72 millimeters. Uh, if you use uh, calibrated shells and your reload goes from 11.2 to 12.04 now one of the reasons you may want to consider running calibrated shells is because um, you get that higher AP on the HE and you get those 600 uh, alpha rolls but you know they are taking a risk there muzzle velocity 1092 meters per second for all rounds that's really low guys really low that's basically kind of um, tier 6 heavy tank sort of um, Performance at a tier 10, so there's nothing to write home to uh, about there. Uh, gun depression is 8 degrees, 15 degrees of elevation, so it's decent gun alignment, but nah, nothing special. I mean, I would be expecting, especially when you look at the turret armor, to get 10 degrees of gun depression on this, to give it more versatility in its play. It does 45 kilometers per hour in a straight line, 20 in reverse, so it is de it's, you know, it's a pretty fast tank. And it has decent power to weight ratio so when we look at the uh, mobility index you will see that come into play it's gun index mm, pretty underwhelming it's 10.9 nothing special right nothing special at all this is kind of what you would expect around tier 7 for a um 
for a heavy tank so no nothing special here at all and um, that's actually quite low and um, when you consider this a premium tank that you know wargaming described as the miracle of christmas i mean give me a fucking break um mobility index is 3.9 now this is good this is very good for tier 10 heavy so this tank is mobile it will get around the map pretty well so this is definitely one good characteristic of it right so its mobility index is very good right but it has you know that poor um gun handling and uh, concealment numbers also big amount of suckage um something with a view range 322 you know so you're talking about one of the light tanks in tier 10 it's going to spot you up at 298 meters if you're not moving and your view range is only 282.5 meters and if you're uh, if you are moving um they get spot you up at 307 meters so what does that mean well if you consider the size of a blitz map that means if there's a light tank in your team if you the player knows what he's doing you're gonna get spotted up in the first 10 20 seconds of a game definitely in the first 30 seconds it's really poor so basically with this tank you're going to be playing with a fucking light bulb over you the whole fucking game you're going to be spotted up um from the get-go and you're going to remain spotted more or less for the whole game once you move out of spawn you're within 300 meters view range of any uh, fast moving tank you're going to get spotted it's as simple as that and you know that they're just facts right you can't argue with facts although i've seen some comments on some of my videos recently it seems that there are some people determined to argue with facts and basic mathematics but anyway i digress now this tank does have great armor right if you are particularly front on right so look here and um, if you look at the turret it's virtually impenetrable it does have that cupola and the mini cupola in the middle which can be penned but they're very small targets and you're very difficult to hit from distance um it has no real armor on the sides and back but you saw there if you go into a side scraping position the relative armor, number, no, armor numbers are very very good so you will get uh, bounces you will be able to side scrape it is a big target it is a tall target and um, so you know it's it is a big target out there in the battlefield but you can see here front on it is very difficult to pen as we said there's the couple and the mini couple up there the basic only penetrable things if you're hull down if front on you can be penned in the lower plate um, and basically this is sort of a tier 10 version of its tier 8 um of its tier 8 um counterpart right now but a tier 8 um you have a lot more options and you're not playing against such such good players and you're not playing against the biggest guns in the game uh, this tank um is good it's a decent tank for sure but it's definitely not the miracle of fucking christmas anyway right no fucking way and they're definitely better um premium collectible tanks at tier 10 and the chieftain mark 6 for example is definitely one of those which i think is a far superior tank and um, now this tank can go front line with that armor you know it is mobile it's going to get into position it can go hull down because it has the eight degrees of gun depression although i think 10 would give it make it a bit better but it's nothing spectacular this tank is nothing spectacular in terms of frontline tank the is4 is much better in terms of hull down tank the chieftain is much better so it's sort of um a jack of all trades and master of none uh, so nothing spectacular now you know basically um you know this is the girl who does want you to give you her phone number right and therefore you want her phone number right war game and, and everybody else is telling you, you need to get this tank and you should have it but honestly guys that's not really the case now i got one used on my press account um and you know just so i can show you guys some gameplay and um, and you know the legendary camo it looks good definitely so you know i'm gonna be as fair as i can in this right the tank looks good with the legendary camo looks great and um, it is a decent tank right there's it, you know you can't say it's a bad tank it absolutely is not and um, but it has underwhelming dpm it has underwhelming muzzle velocity and gun handling um, its mobility is good definitely very good i mean it's almost medium tank mobility um, and it has really really good frontal armor right so they're the good things about it but as i said front line there are better front line tanks e100 is4 for example and um, in terms of um, heviums the is7 is better um, and in terms of hold down tanks well the chieftain uh, mark 6 is way better so you know that's just sort of i'm just being honest with you guys right 
in terms of in-game setup you can have a look at it here and um, I didn't really go through it there but you can uh, play and rewind and see how I set it up pretty much how I set up most um, um, heavies especially those I'm gonna play hold down do a bit of sniping in now uh, going back to the characteristics as we look at some gameplay here you will see that um, as I said it is mobile it takes off it's like shit off a shovel for a heavy tank right it fucking gets there and um, so definitely no complaints about that right you can see it is a good looking tank and um, the uh, turret by the way is reminiscent of the octopus of the FV215B and um, you can see here um you know you can i get it i think i get a scouting badge or patrol duty badge in this or something as well you can see what i said there about the turret massive uh, bounce there if you look at the damage bounce 1300 that's a hash round from the um from the death star and the opposite team death star another piece of shit you can see there what i said about the um, gun um, gun index right gun handling is poor right Chieftain Mark VI would have put that round straight into that IS-8, right? As you can see, um, the gun handling, um, not, it's not great. Um, Chieftain Mark VI has far superior gun handling as well. Now, if you remember the review I did of the Chieftain Mark VI, I actually had, it was a very, very similar game, um, and adopted the, uh, the same position on the map, um, which I often do in this map with um, hull down tanks. Um, you know, look, in terms of um, <coughs> the gun handling, when you're closer to targets, the muzzle velocity is not such a big issue, so therefore it's fine. You saw me penning there to VK, no problem. Um, but the other issue about this tank is, particularly if you're doing long range sniping, is that all of the um, all of the um, rounds have the same muzzle velocity, <coughs> and we generally expect. Um, APCR and premium AP rounds to have a higher muzzle velocity because basically the composite metals in them um, usually mean the uh, shell um, f travels faster, right? And they have more um, charge in the in the shell itself, so the initial and final muzzle velocity is more. Um, this is not the case with this tank, so that sort of lacks that. Um, because you know, ver cycling to your shells and experienced players know this. Um, it's not just about the additional pen, but cycling through to an APCR round, for example, is often um, preferable when you want to make a shot from distance on a fast moving target because it, it arrives, you know, fractions of a second earlier. Um, and that's not the case on this tank. Um, so that's another kind of limitation I just think you should be aware of. Um, you know, um, uh, you can see here, I'm going I'm to get into a bit of a little brawl with the Leopard. I decided, you know, he's not as dangerous as the Death Star, so I want to bring the Death Star down to one shot for my allies. That's why I'm happy to take another hit from the Leopard. Um, he makes a mistake here, he lets me back up to the rock. And after that, it's game over. I'm going to bounce a shot from here off the frontal armor and turret, and then it's game over, and my allies take him out. Um, so, you know, pretty simple game, nothing spectacular in that, but, you know, I think it's a I think it ends up as a first class mastery badge and a lot of um, other badges delivered as well. I think patrol duty, uh, confederate, etc. So you know, pretty decent game. And look, it is a decent tank. It is definitely a decent tank, guys. I'm not going to tell you it's not a decent tank. It absolutely is. Um, but in terms of is it the miracle of Christmas? Is it super duper fantastic, fan dabby dozy, super califragilistic, expialidocious tank? It absolutely is not. And as I said, there are better tanks. For going front line better heviums and better hull down tanks um, but if you really really want it and as i said if you've recently had that frontal lobotomy then by all means go ahead otherwise i would save your gold and use it for the auction when you know you're going to be guaranteed to get a tank that you want and there's some great tanks there like the k91 etc so i would go there rather than waste your time on this just my uh just my view guys i hope you found it useful i hope you found it enjoyable I hope that this helps you in your decision making. But whatever you do, let me wish you a very happy and merry Christmas. And be, um, be cognitive of the fact that, you know, um, at this time of year, it's about uh, enjoying ourselves. So don't get too stressed out about not getting this tank if you don't, in fact, get it or even have a chance of getting it. Yes, it's good to have, but you don't need to have it. Okay, cheers, Mush. Thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful. Hope you found it enjoyable. And now, I guess, all that remains for me to say is... Pants off. That's all, folks.